Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. I apologize, first and foremost, if you hear a bunch of stuff going on on the street. There is a school bus that has just been sitting out there, out there just honking its horn, and now I think it's backing up down the block. I don't know if you can hear that. But it's six in the morning, guys, and I don't know why this school bus driver decided to just lay on the horn for a good 10 minutes, but they did. Anyway, if you hear that in the background, that's what's going on. <laughs> but this is a general energy reading for today, Wednesday, December 19th, 2018. This is a general reading, okay? So this is not love or sign or career or anything specific. This is just what spirit would like to speak with us about today, okay? Energies are fluid, so this could be something that you went through already. This could be something that you are about to go through or you're currently going through, or this may not be something that you're going through at all, but if not, if you would like to stick with us and hang out and listen to the message, I encourage it because you could come up with some good insight into something, yeah? Also, I did get a microphone, um, so please, uh, you should be able to, you may be able to hear me a little better. I am speaking, you know, quietly, monitoring the input, but um, please let me know how the volume sounds, yeah? Okay, so without further ado... Let's get on into it, shall we? You hear that? That's that honking <laughs> that's been going on for the past 10 minutes. Okay. Oh boy. Let's just get to it, shall we? All right. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Wednesday, December 19th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so I don't know, this might be a little loud, the shuffling. We'll see. I'm trying to. Okay. This level's not too bad. I'm sorry. I am. I'm. Uh, I'm monitoring the level of the input here just to make sure I'm not like blowing your eardrums out with shuffling. <laughs> Let me just do this real quick here. Okay. Wednesday, December nineteenth. 2018. All right, one more shuffle, guys. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see what we've got for today. Today, Wednesday. December 19th, 2018. So we're starting off starting off with the Eight of Swords so far. December 19th. Thank you so much, Spirit. Oh, man. There's that Ten of Cups again, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's just see what we've got so far. Underneath the deck, we've got the Queen of Cups now. Okay, so the King of Cups came out yesterday. The Queen of Cups is coming out today. So, we're talking feminine energies today, y'all. First thing that came out was the Eight of Swords. Oh my gosh, look at this. And the Queen of Wands. So this is a complete mirror image to yesterday's reading so far because we have the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands. Whereas yesterday, the King of Cups and the King of Wands came out, okay? Let's see here. We've got, wow, we've got the Ten of Cups and the Six of Swords. Very interesting. So we're definitely getting into the feminine counterparts to uh, what we were talking about yesterday. <laughs> so basically what's going on here today is 
or at least right now, and the energies right now, um, feminine energies are in the process of moving forward as well, and they've got the Ten of Cups in mind, okay? But you see, there's trouble. And that's coming, oh boy, that's coming in the form of the Eight of Swords. Now the Eight of Swords almost, I dropped it and it almost fell off the table. Um, I did catch it, but to me that's saying that, you know, this is, and this is the message of the card anyway, this is, um, this mental prison is, a little, is an illusion, okay? So some of you are trying to, definitely trying to move on. Definitely trying to move on. Um, in some cases, I feel like it's not working so well, but it's the situation in which you feel trapped here. Now, we could be talking divine, divine feminines in the form of twin flames, uh, but we also could just be talking about any sort of feminine energy this could even be, if you resonate more as masculine, this could be the feminine energy within you. Um, for some of you specifically who do identify as twin flames, um, on the masculine side, it's almost as if you're going through the same thing that some of the feminines go through in the sense of feeling trapped or stuck in this situation, uh, in this whole twin flame dynamic. Thing going on you know so there's a little bit of that going on so the, that message there is you are absolutely allowed to move on okay it, I know at one point um, your situation with your divine masculine or even if even your situation with your divine feminine this seemed like the ten of cups and that's just how it's designed to look and um, now please don't get me wrong with what I'm about to say just because uh, it doesn't work out for some people doesn't mean it's not necessarily going to work out for for everyone you know there is there are situations in which the twin flame twin flame union is realized okay but for some it's really tumultuous it becomes really toxic and there becomes a point well actually for all of us there does come a point where you will need to separate okay you do go into separation phase and that's where you really start doing the healing that you need to accomplish on your own, okay? And so we can get caught in a vicious cycle within that separation phase of feeling required or obligated to stay associated with this person that we consider to be our twin. Why is that? Well, much of that is because of the dogma, uh, some of the things that some people teach out there. First and foremost, there are no cut and dry rules or there is no, uh, within the twin flame situation, there is no twin flame Bible, okay? There's a lot of, 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 of information circulating out there, some of it different, some of it similar. There's a lot of there are a lot of different points of view. No no points no point of view is wrong. At the same time, no point of view is completely right. Okay, no point of view has all the answers. Regardless of how much you may resonate with someone, you may resonate with me. You and may have been resonating with me and the readings that I've been putting out for quite some time. But that does not mean I have all the answers. Okay. No one has all the answers. So it's really about what resonates with you more. And what I'm seeing here is that there are many of you that are trying to move on but feel trapped in some way. Six of Swords, Eight of Swords. This mental prison that you are in is self-imposed. And I say it that way because you are allowing the teachings of other people that you don't necessarily resonate with to hold you in a position that you no longer want to be in, that is no longer healthy for you to be in. Now, granted, you are on this path, okay? You've been awakened to the twin flame journey, and now you're going through the motions. Now is the time for you to stop focusing on this other person, your divine masculine, your divine feminine, whoever they are and wherever, whoever you are in, in relation to the spectrum. 
It is time to stop focusing on this person that is external to you and start for focusing internally, okay? Getting your emotions in check. Um, the Queen of Cups, the energy that I'm getting from the Queen of Cups right now is very healing. It's very healing, okay? Um, it's, the, you know, the cooling waters, the, the waters of healing here. It's also um, deep, strong emotion. And then you have the Queen of Wands, which to me is a depiction of the Divine Feminine in uh, the Minor Arcana, whereas the Divine Feminine would be in the Major Arcana would be the Empress. The Divine Masculine in the Major Arcana would be the Emperor. The Emperor and the Empress are like the official Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine cards. But then when you get into the Minor Arcana, you have the King and the Queen of Wands, which to me depicts the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. And so that's what you have here. You have this fiery energy of being the Divine Feminine, uh, but and your Ten of Cups is what you're after here, okay? But it's that you, and it's funny because with the Six of Swords and the Ten of Cups here, you want to be moving forward. You really want to be um, making strides, taking steps towards reaching this Ten of Cups, and it's and, and what else I'm getting here is some of you feel trapped in that you're under the impression that um, your divine masculine or your twin flame is not doing the work. And so you're stuck here in this somewhat of a limbo period. But that is all. But the, see, now that could be represented by, say, like uh, the hanged man. OK, or maybe maybe even the four of swords. But that that feels more like a hanged man situation. Um, but that's not how it's being re represented here. It's represented as the Eight of Swords. So what this is saying to me is you don't have to be trapped in this at all. Okay, this is a self-imposed mental prison. At any moment, you can cut yourself out of that. And so I say all that to say, stop focusing on the external, this person that is external to you, and start focusing on healing within. You absolutely can take steps to move forward towards your Ten of Cups, to move on towards your Ten of Cups. You don't have to worry about whether this person that is external to you, that you are under the impression or you have been guided towards believing that this is your twin flame. You don't have to do anything or, or halt yourself, stop yourself from doing anything, put yourself on hold just because they don't seem to be doing their work. Now, just because it looks like they're not doing their work doesn't mean that they are not, okay? They could very well be. You just don't recognize it or you're just not seeing it. But that's where the detachment comes into play and is imperative, crucial, that you detach from the outcome, the expectation, you release attachment towards this person, focus solely on you. What is it that is that this Ten of Cups represents for you? And what do you need to do to move towards it? Not what someone else needs to do. What do you need to do to move towards it? Because ultimately, you may be in this situation right now where you're feeling, you're feeling, Queen of Cups, like, this person is going to be everything that you've always wanted them to be. And that is, or everything that you've always wanted in a partner, in a mate or whatnot. And that could very well materialize. But even if it does, you're not going to get there until you do your healing. You take the steps towards what it would take for you to manifest and move towards this Ten of Cups, regardless of what someone else is doing. Keep in mind that there is, in fact, free will here in this planet, on this earth, on this world, in this lifetime. There is free will, okay? You cannot force someone to do something they are not ready or willing to do. You cannot force someone to make changes to their lives that they are not ready, willing, ready and willing to make on their own. Okay, these people have to do, people have to make their changes and do their evolution or do their ascending and get through their own evolution, evolve, whatnot, whatever, on their own terms, when they are ready for it, when they want to do it, when they choose to do it. Okay, you cannot do that for them. All right, 
I'm wanting to do I'm wanting to do one more pull here and then get into clarification. So I'm going to do that. I want to leave the Queen of Cups right up here. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Underneath the Queen of Cups is the Empress. So yeah, we're definitely talking divine feminine energy here. All right, I'm going to get one more pull, but look at that. You've got both depictions of the divine feminine Empress and the Queen of Wands right there all right so we're definitely talking divine feminine today y'all okay and there so i'm gonna do i'm gonna pull one more time and let's see the final outcome here thank you so much spirit final message here for today Wednesday, December 19th, and we're good. Okay, it was just that one last card. All right. Underneath the deck is the Seven of Wands. Boundaries, ladies and gentlemen. Boundaries with the Knight of Cups. All right, so check it out, y'all. This final message here is speaking to maintaining your own personal boundaries. And actually, you know what's so funny? I, I, what just came through with the Knight of Cups is um, Spirit just said, be your own Knight of Cups, okay? I mean, the only way that you're really going to get the love that you want to yourself, that you want to experience is to first give it to yourself. Give yourself that love that you are desiring to receive from someone else. Some of you really need to put some boundaries in place. Um, I'm so sorry guys, I totally just stopped the recording because I was trying to get out of full screen, but okay. What I was saying was, um, some of you really need to put some boundaries in place, some stronger boundaries. I really feel like, uh, some of you are in this stage where you are in the emotions of the situation, okay? You're all up in your emotions about this. And so you're lacking in boundaries, in healthy boundaries, in boundaries that are gonna keep you protected and safe. And I totally get that, all right? Um, but what the Seven of Wands is saying, to me, it's screaming that you have to put some boundaries into place. You don't have to be so open and available for your twin, for your divine masculine, for your divine feminine. Why? Because then that's just going to set a precedence that they can come and go whenever they please. And that keeps them from honoring you and your wishes should you want to put stronger boundaries in place later on. Okay? So really, like really get some boundaries going. Protect yourself. I'm hearing to protect your own sanity. Now for some of you, the more you put your own boundaries into place, the more that you honor yourself, love yourself, respect yourself, because the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Wands is very sure of herself. She knows exactly what it is she, she wants to do, what she's after, um, and she allows it to come to her, okay? Now, we don't chase, number one, we align, but number two, the Queen of Wands has no need to chase situations or people are often chasing after her right it's like the epitome of magnetism manifestation right so the more you place put your boundaries into place the more that you honor yourself you love yourself the more that you release yourself from this mental prison and you work on moving forward here right eight of swords six of swords the more you attract someone that's going to want to that is in alignment with you knight of cups this could be your divine masculine but understand that it absolutely in no way does it need to be your divine masculine especially if you or your divine feminine especially if you've gotten to this period where you're like i really don't even know if i want to be with this person anymore i don't know if i want this person to come forward or come back Maybe you're just not ready for it, or maybe, you know, you're just not interested anymore, and either one of those are A-OK, -okay. right? 
the queen of wands does not dim her shine for anyone. She knows what she wants, and if she doesn't want something, she's okay with that. She recognizes that it's, it's not, she doesn't have to, if it doesn't serve her, if it doesn't make her happy, she doesn't have to, to, to go through with it, to honor it. Okay. All right, so let's get some clarification now. All right, guys. Um, I did. <laughs> if this, if the audio it went complete silent there, I did turn down the input while I was shuffling because I didn't want to destroy eardrums here. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with the Queen of Cups, the Empress, and the Queen of Wands. Let's get some clarification there, please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Wheel of Fortune. Excellent. Okay. All right. So you've got the Wheel of Fortune. All right. So there's, there's a lot of things that are changing here. Um, underneath the deck. Oh, underneath the deck is the Two of Cups. Now, I'm getting two different things here. One, I'm getting that some of you, there are some of you out there that are really are um, in your absence from their lives, you are actively aligning with your twin flame. How is that happening? Well, that is by you honoring yourself, doing what it is you need to do to better yourself, to change your fortune, to go with the flow of the Wheel of Fortune, to honor yourself, to love yourself, to come into union within. Coming into union within um, is how you bring what it is you truly desire to you in the physical realm, okay? Now, others of you are, in fact, aligning with a brand new soulmate or someone who is more fitting to your vibration in this moment in time because you have changed the game, you know? You've completed uh, the karmic cycle that you had going on with this uh, divine masculine that is external to you, okay? Or maybe even your divine feminine. To, uh, take what resonates with you. Um, now, I would say that if you normally um, have resonated more with the divine masculine side of things, um, and this message is resonating with you, then that is a perfect indication that your feminine energies are coming into alignment with your masculine energies, okay? So that is that union within with the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups has been saying that to me for quite some time now because that is actively what is happening. Uh, for example, if you've been following Emily of um, uh, Indigo Moon's Healing, Indigo Moon's Healing, She's been talking about this new archetype that has that has been uh, manifesting and that is coming into fruition because of the balance between masculine and femininity within. OK, so you could be resonating with that or you could be in the process of aligning with that new archetype. OK, now um, you don't have now. So and, and with that, there is an alignment coming into play. For some of you, this is the alignment of masculinity and femininity within, and this is also the alignment of you and a, a soulmate external to yourself that you are in the process of manifesting, okay? But either way, either way, the karmic cycle is changing, okay? It's coming, there, there are certain things that are coming to it, and a new start karmic cycle is starting, for many of the feminines out there. And that really, honestly, you could even read that just plainly, solely as the, the, the divine feminine is on the rise right now. 
okay? And that is changing the karmic wheel, period. You know what I mean? Like, it's just changing everything. Okay. So now let's get into the Eight of Swords, the Six of Swords, and the Ten of Cups. So this is that feeling like you you have you have this Ten of Cups energy, you have this Ten of Cups situation, but you feel trapped. Eight of Swords. You want to continue to move forward, forward towards it. Some of you are feeling like you can't move forward because your Divine Masculine or your Divine Feminine is not is quote not cooperating some in some way. Um, you feel like you're trapped. You're stuck with this person even though they may have treated you wrong, even though they may have done some things that you know are kind of not so good. Maybe you've done some of those things too. You know, no, this is a two-way street. Nobody is innocent here completely. No one is completely 100% innocent, okay? Um, but, hmm. excuse me. Um, yeah. So you have to cut yourself out of this mental prison. You have to realize that you don't have to stay in a situation that is toxic. Just because there are people out there saying that if this is your twin flame, this is who you're destined to be with and you have to wait for them or not necessarily wait for them, but like hold space for them or this, that, and a third, but they're not really cooperating. So if that's, it all depends on what you feel. If you feel good about holding space for this person and continuing to do your work with intentions of coming into alignment with them, if that feels good with you, or for you, please continue to do so. But if that doesn't feel good, if that if you don't resonate with that any longer, there is no reason why you should be stuck in this mental prison and why you should not be able to move forward towards something that would be the a truer expression of your ten of cups. Okay? So let's get some clarification here for this side. Thank you so much, Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. Okay. All right, here we go. So we've got some things that flew, uh, that um, flipped over in the deck here. And I believe one of them is the Ten of Wands. So we've got the King of Swords. And I thought, no, no, okay. It was just the King of Swords then. Let me just double check here. But you also have the Seven of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. Now, some of you are really are juggling. You know, you're teeter-tottering. You're going back and forth. It's like, do I stay or do I go? <laughs> you're juggling the emotions. You're juggling the... the, the... Oh, no, it w I found it. It wasn't the Ten of Wands. It was the Two of Wands. Yeah, do I stay or do I go? Underneath the... Oh, man. There's the Ten of Wands <laughs> underneath the deck, the Ten of Wands. All right, so there are many of you that are just burdened by this. And it's funny because with the Seven of Pentacles here, you have the Seven of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles, and the Two of Wands. The Seven of Pentacles is saying to me that many of you have learned the lesson here. Okay, you've come to the period where you're harvesting now and you're understanding what that harvest is. And that is exactly why you are feeling trapped with the Eight of Swords and you want to move on, move forward with the Six of Swords. It's like you understand all that or you learn what you've needed to learn in this situation. Um, but now because of some of the dogma or some of the information that's being put out, in the Twin Flame Collective, some of you are in a process of trying to decide, teeter-tottering, well, this person is supposed to be my Divine Masculine or my Divine Feminine. I, I've been told that I have to stick with them, that I'm going to be with them for, like, this is my person. No, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, okay? If that person is no longer in alignment with you, if you are no longer in alignment with that person, if this is not something you wish to continue moving forward with, you have the free will to drop that burden and to choose another path, okay? And you're not doing anything wrong. It all depends on how you feel about the situation. We, we are here as guides to help you understand, but we are not the ultimate choice makers of your life. That's your decision. Okay, if something doesn't resonate with you any longer, by all means, let it go and move forward. Okay, 
And that's what the energies of the King of Swords are sa is saying right here. Now, the King of Swords is a diplomat, all right? He's going to hear somebody out. The Queen of Swords doesn't have time for conversation. She's just moving on. She's cutting whatever out that she needs to, and she's moving forward. But this is a depiction of uh, another depiction. <clears throat> this is another depiction of uh, that balance between masculine and feminine energy coming into play for you here. So for those of you on the feminine side, you have a, cho a chance to work with your inner king of swords, okay? We've been the queen of swords for a long time, but now you have the choice, the opportunity to act as the king of swords. Diplomacy, hear it out, weigh out the options. You know, look through the case first to maybe get a little bit of a refresher, to maybe understand a little more. Maybe there are some things that you didn't see before but be diplomatic, be as objective as possible, and then make a decision. Cut some things out. Cut out the fluff. I mean, yesterday the message was uh, um, trimming the fat, right? So continue to do that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So then we also have the world, the ace of pentacles, and the three of cups. Now, for some of you, for some of you, as you move through this King of Swords energy, you may find that there are some things that you missed before, okay? And so, should you investigate that and find that there are some things that you missed about the, the situation or the person, you, that could help you bring the situation to a close. That could very well be the burdens that you're continuing to carry with the Ten of Wands. And should you release that, that'll bring the situation to completion. And then you have a new beginning and a union or reconciliation here. Okay. But now for others of you in this diplomacy, in this objectivity, in this King of Swords energy, you find that this really does not suit you any longer. You cut some things out. You're good. You release the burdens, you've learned the lessons, you make the decision, and you have the completion, the world. With the completion comes a brand new beginning and a union with someone that is in more alignment to you. Three of Cups, Ace of Pentacles. Okay? I mean, for some of you, it's interesting. For some of you, you're just wanting to go out there and be social. Have some fun, connect with some friends, soul family even. And then look, you do have the Knight of Cups here. So there are, the, at the bottom of the reading, so there is an energy of someone coming forward to offer you something. Now this is not the King of Cups energy. This is the Knight of Cups. So it's still a little, maybe a little on the immature side. Not, It's not like fully grown, but it's not like a Page of Cups situation. Okay, this is like an innocent offer. This is like an invitation to a party or like to go, I don't know, get a cup of coffee or something. Like it's nothing serious, but from here, it can't, I mean, oh wait, hold on. Now let me, let me, <laughs> I take that back a little bit. It's not like it's not serious. For some, in some situations, it's not that serious, but in some other situations, it is kind of like a serious interest, okay? A genuine offer of wanting to start somewhere and then grow, you know, expand from there, right? Okay, so let's get some clarification on this Knight of Cups here. Please, Spirit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Underneath the deck, oops, we have the Three of Swords here. Okay. We have the Knight of Wands, <laughs> the Knight of Wands that fell right onto the Knight of Cups, all right? We also have the Eight of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles reversed. All right, so some of you are still dealing with the heartbreak associated with this Twin Flames situation. Now, granted, this doesn't have to be Twin Flames. This could just be a serious partnership, but... Some of you are still dealing with the heartbreak and are working towards healing from that. Um, very much focused on your work here. Okay. Now, 
with the Knight of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles came out and it's coming out in the reverse. And I'm sitting here trying to decipher whether this is more about um, a blockage or... Okay, for some of you, I'm, re I'm getting that you're not really looking to invest much in um, a relationship. This is an interesting message. For some of you, you just want to have fun with this Knight of Wands energy. But also for some of you that are coming, for some of you, an individual that is coming through here is showing up as the Knight of Wands. Now this could be a counterpart because the Knight of Wands can be seen as the spiritual warrior. Hmm. The Eight of Pentacles and the Ten of, but the, you have the Eight of Pentacles, but then you also have the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. I'm getting an energy of someone is coming in maybe for a good time um, and their focus is on some sort of work here. The Eight of Pentacles upright and the Ten of Pentacles in reverse is a very contradictory message and I'm trying, <laughs> I'm really trying to decipher what that really could mean or what that does, not, that what, it, not what it could mean but what it does mean here. For the most part, I'm getting an energy of Ten of Pentacles, uh, long-term investment, longevity is in the works. There's some sort of blockage, but I almost don't even want to call it a blockage. I want to clarify this one more time. But I do think that, okay, all right, okay, wait, no, wait, 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 I think I get it now. Three of Swords. This is what's blocking that long-term investment. It's almost as if some of you are, are willing to accept some sort of fling, one-night stand, nothing too serious right now just because of the, three, the heartbreak that you're dealing with. It's almost as if you just want to, you just want to have a good time right now. You don't want to focus on anything serious. You're already focusing on your work, your what you need to do to continue to build your life and build your empire on your own. Um, you're not really looking for any sort of long-term investment right now. That's completely valid. But that's mainly because you're still in the process of healing from this Three of Swords energy. Okay. That's the message. But understand now, but the, the, other, the other confusing or contradictory thing about it is, and this is, I guess this is why I was getting so confused, is because the Ten of Pentacles, even though it's reversed, is still here. There's just a blockage towards it. So whatever you're dealing with, whoever knew that you're dealing with, whoever knew that could be coming into your life, that you're just kind of like, well, I'm just not in for a, a long-term thing, it could turn out, end up being some sort of long-term thing, eventually. Uh, you, may, you may just be blinding yourself to it at this point, at, the, at this moment in time right now, because there are some boundaries that are set here in the Seven of Wands, okay? Alrighty, guys. So next, let's get into the Oracle Guidance section. I'm gonna turn the volume down here. Today, Wednesday, December 19th, 2018. Let's see what we've got today. Thank you so much, Spirit. There it is. B. Okay. A little worker B. Doing its thing. Ooh, sorry, guys. All right, B. Mm 
that firefly B. Here we go. Earnest, hardworking, democratic. The B personality is a delight to be around, especially when there's a team project on the horizon. Bees love to work steadily and thoughtfully until the final task is complete. They are sensitive creatures, aware of many subtleties at once. Since they're artists at heart, they usually add creative details to the overall vision. For the most part, they have bustling, joyous personalities until they're too tired from all the work. Then they gripe and then they sting. When in balance, B is content, active, and vibrant. When out of balance, B feels overworked and annoyed. To bring into balance, one must go on a mini vacation. I just feel like that's where a lot of the individuals within the Divine Feminine Collective or those of you that um, resonate, if, even if you're not necessarily on a twin flame journey or don't necessarily resonate with the twin flame situation, I just feel like the feminine energies as a whole are kind of feeling overworked, um, feeling like we need a vacation. I mean, I know I I know I feel that way, and I've kind of been using December as like a vacation time. Um, but I'm just seeing. I also I'm seeing them work. You guys are working really really hard right now. You know, striving, but also thriving in many ways um and b b energy is just feeling very social you know so this is probably a time where you don't really want to get into anything too serious i really feel like many of you have come to a period where you're finally starting to release a lot of what happened within the twin flame situation within the twin flame dynamic if you resonate with that and now it's like you don't even want to think about having a, a long-term solid thing it's almost as if you yourself divine feminine are in this knight of sword uh, knight of wands knight of cups energy like just kind of flirty not really trying to get into anything too serious. You know, you're working on putting your pieces back together, building your own empire. You do have the Ten of Cups in mind, but you also have the Ten of Pentacles in mind, and that's where you're really focusing right now. Because this is not quite in alignment just yet for you, the Ten of Pentacles. But what is, oddly enough, what is in alignment for you right now is your heart, the Ten of Cups. Because that's what you've been working so hard to heal for the long, for the past few, I don't know, years, months, whatever, however long you've been consciously doing this. And you do have the Ace of Pentacles here. So I am thinking, I am feeling like um, some of you in this completion that you're experiencing with the world, some of you are really like very much embarking on new creative endeavors, new business endeavors, that kind of thing, right? And so you really don't have time for a long-term commitment or you probably just don't have the energy for it. Which totally makes sense because a lot of the people that really resonate here on my channel are not necessarily looking for soulmate information. They're looking for information about their own situation. <laughs> so that makes perfect sense. So now I'm gonna close the reading with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. I'm gonna turn this down. Here we go, guys. Closing message, please, Spirit. Wednesday, December 19th. All right. We got two. <laughs> Underneath the deck is Storm Wisdom. So that talks about, um, you know, weathering the storm, but learning through it, okay? We have 
Wait a second. I think this came out for the Twin Flame reading on Sunday. Card number 24, Divine, I'm sorry, um, Ascended Master Mary Magdalene and Aqua Aura Quartz, Divine Alchemy. And then we also have Ascended Master Mother, wow. Ascended Master Mother Mary and Celestite. That's great. Unconditional trust. So we have Mary Magdalene and we have Mother Mary here. The energies of Mary Magdalene and the energies of Mother Mary. Excellent. So we're going to go with uh, card number 24 first. Divine Alchemy. We bring you the blessing of divine alchemy. Divine alchemy is the, art, is the art of transmutation, the application of spiritual consciousness to physical form, so profound that an entirely new form evolves. It is irreversible change. It is the coal transformed into the diamond, the lead of sleeping matter, awakened to, I'm sorry, awakened into the radiant gold of consciousness. Successful alchemical transformation requires patience, courage, and a belief in the power of spirit above all else. The radical and permanent transformation affected by divine alchemy may seem miraculous to the outsider viewing the changed form, yet the alchemist knows that when spiritual consciousness meets physical matter, the world will never be the same again. So yeah, there's definitely, I, this definitely came out over the weekend. Um, it didn't come out yesterday. It was, was it? No, I don't remember. I, okay, well, it could have been yesterday. I don't think it was. I think it was on Sunday during the Twin Flame channeling, the Twin Flame reading. Um, but I know it came out within the last few days. And there's definitely a change happening, divine alchemy. And this absolutely speaks to the balance between masculine and feminine within, all right? So that really is creating a new form, which ultimately creates this new archetype that I mentioned that um, Emily of Indigo Moon's healing has been talking about recently, okay? Finally, we have Ascended Master Mother Mary and Celestite, Unconditional Trust. We bring you the blessing of unconditional trust. There are times when trust comes easily. Perhaps life is proceeding according to some sort of plan, or you have enough money to feel safe, sufficient prospects on the horizon to feel excited, and enough love in your relationships to feel wanted and valued. Then there are times when it is harder to trust. Perhaps none of the above applies to you. You are lost, feel alone, confused, and without a clear plan or sign of hope ahead. You may be frightened and just want something to lift you out of the darkness and into the light. Your mind and perhaps your family and friends might tell you that this is a time that is crazy to trust. They may tell you that you should try to fix yourself, get real, give up uh, and get on with life. Do not listen to doubts or negativity in others or yourself. It is safe to trust. The Divine Mother is watching over you and will guide you safely into the new life awaiting you now. Well, that's quite beautiful, don't you think? <laughs> All right, guys. So there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I really hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, just a quick note. Well, two quick notes. I am doing happy hour tonight uh, from starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So... Please don't hesitate to tune in for that. I will be doing a bit of a general energy reading. And then the floor will be open for single question readings at a discounted rate of $20 each. Also keep in mind that I am running a holiday special. All readings except for the single question reading are 20% off. And that sale is going through, uh, will be ending midnight, December 31st, okay? Um, so go ahead and email me if you would like a reading at a discounted rate, and I'll get you set up. All right. Well, without further ado, have a great day, everyone, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. And if you like, I'll see you tonight during happy hour. Okay? Take care. Bye.